Hi folks, the Filipina Pee here, telling it like it is. And today it's time to anger the feminists again by disagreeing with the idea that whatever's good for the guys must be good for the girls. In particular, the apparent double standard that exists when it comes to your number of bedmates. When a man's really successful at shaking the sheets, he's a stud, someone to be admired and emulated. But when a woman does too many squat thrusts in the cucumber patch, she's considered damaged goods. Is that fair? After all, a woman can do whatever a man can, right? So why does society treat us differently when it comes to putting ranch dressing in the Hidden Valley? Well, hold on tight and let's find out. So what's wrong with some casual coitus? It's the 21st century and with social media, our options are greater than ever and our available dating pools have expanded faster than Val Kilmer. So why not enjoy a little bada bang bada boom for stress relief and do all the bushwhacking you desire before choosing a person to settle down with? Well, that's your business and it certainly won't criticize you for whatever decision you make, male or female. If sweeping the chimney or sharpening the pencil makes you happy, knock yourself out. But you need to understand that if you're a woman, studies suggest you might be reducing your chances for a successful marriage and compromising your ability to bond with your mate. And although what I'm about to discuss is a universal male-female thing, it might affect Filipinas even more than Western women because we tend to be a little less worldly or savvy when it comes to stuff in the muffin. And handing us a cell phone with a dating app full of thousands of willing men can be like handing a loaded gun to an emotional teenager. Now let me say right off the bat that I'm not a psychologist or a behavioral researcher, except in an amateur capacity. But I do study these things and listen to the arguments on both sides. And I found a lot of good data to support my position. I'm not saying that women with colorful pasts should be looked down on or passed over. I'm just explaining why a woman's history of horizontal refreshment isn't something to brag about, while to a man, a successful history is. Women are even attracted to men who are experienced at playing with the box that kids came in because it means he's obviously desired by other women as well. That phenomenon does not work the other way around. Very few men are attracted to a woman who's hosted the entire Russian Olympic hockey team for a game of hide the puck. But why? Are men just part of the patriarchy, insecure and obsessed with virginity, treating women like their property? Well, that might be true for some, but there's also a very good reason why the double standard exists. Many of you have heard the analogy of the master key and the faulty lock. But for those of you that haven't, it goes like this. Women are the gatekeepers of sex. We're almost always the ones that decide when it happens. And we're responsible for locking the gate to keep out unwanted visitors. Men have the keys that try to open the locks. And a key that opens many locks is considered a master key. But a lock that opens for many keys is just a bad lock. So a man who sleeps with a lot of women must have desirable genes and attractive traits. But a woman who invites any old Tom, Harry, or Dick into her pink palace is gonna get her treasure stolen by a bunch of womb raiders. And you can also think of it as a question of perceived value. A gram of gold is a lot more valuable than a gram of iron because it's harder to find. A man who can attract a lot of women is seen as high value. But a woman who lets a lot of guys slither in the Hufflepuff is nothing special. Traditionally, a man has to work up the courage to approach a woman, plan the date, impress the date, maybe put in several dates in order to have a chance at bumping uglies. But what does a woman have to do? All she has to do is say one word. Yes, not exactly an impressive feat. I'm only average looking, but I have no doubt I could get three guys in the three days it took to produce this video. Does that make me desirable? Nope. Special? Not hardly. But the man that can do that is either incredibly sexy or incredibly rich. Either way, he's high value. 
Now, these analogies are just common sense, and even women instinctively know it. But now let's take a look at some cold hard facts. According to the research by the Medical Institute for Sexual Health, having intercourse bonds two people together chemically as well as physically. And an abundance of casual sex causes the brain to rewire itself. One night stands become the new normal, making it more difficult to bond with just one person. In another study, women with an above average number of partners tended to be less satisfied with their current mates, making divorce more likely. The magic number seems to be 10, and women with more partners than that are at a much higher risk of ending up alone. Now that may sound like an awful lot of two-person push-ups, but consider this. The average number of partners for a British woman is 7. For a Texan, it's 9. And if you're from Louisiana, you probably engage in gland-to-gland -gland combat with a total of 15 other people. So according to these numbers, there are going to be a lot of unhappy older women. The men, however, didn't seem to be affected to the same degree. And excessive amounts of locking legs and swapping gravy didn't diminish their happiness level. Big surprise, right? But why the difference? Well, here's my theory. And feel free to disagree or suggest your own. I think a woman's level of satisfaction decreases as they have more partners to compare. As we accumulate more experiences, we tend to form an impossible image of the perfect man from the best characteristics of all the ones before you. We want the abs of Tyrone, the generosity of Chad, the emotional strength of Rocky, and we'll be quick to notice all the areas where our current partner doesn't measure up. It's another result of hypergamy. Women don't go back down the ladder peacefully. We only get pulled back down kicking and screaming when reality forces us to, as our sexual market value decreases as we age, leaving us with fewer options. Most of us see the reality of our situations, but that doesn't mean we have to like it. And if we get a chance to cheat time by jumping to a higher value man, some of us will do it. Now to be fair, obviously some men will jump to a younger, sexier model too, but it doesn't seem to be for their same reasons. Generally speaking, when men cheat, it's for sexual excitement and variety, not an attempt to replace their partners. When women cheat, they're often looking for a permanent upgrade. So maybe that's why a man with a large number of sex partners can still be perfectly happy to settle down for a long successful marriage. But the most convincing argument might be purely mathematical. If a woman only has one or two partners, what are the chances that you'll be her final guy? Pretty decent. But if a woman has 25 partners, what are the chances that she'll stop at you Mr. 26, substantially less. So the next time a woman you barely know sends you a nude photo, your first thought, well, maybe your second thought, is to wonder how many other guys she sent that picture to. And I don't blame you. The real trick is trying to get an honest number out of any woman you're interested in. The chances of getting a woman's true notch count is about the same as winning the lottery five days in a row without buying the ticket. But you really need to try because besides problems with bonding and increased chances of unhappiness and divorce, there are other practical reasons why you want to have a long talk with your partner. Her past does matter because you need to know about any angry exes living nearby, children that have been sent off to live with relatives that she hasn't been particularly forthcoming about, and experiences that might have changed who she is. And to my Filipina sisters, Unless you think you've found the one, it's better to keep the gates of mortar closed. You may have the right to enjoy lots of casual sex, but that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. And you might pay for it later in ways you didn't expect. If you think that playing hanky-panky give me a spanky will get a guy interested, the irony is that in the long run, it might do just the opposite. If you show that you have value, you create value. Well, that's it for today, and I hope this frank discussion of a very adult topic didn't offend you. And if it did, you're too uptight, and you need to go wax the carrot. Anyway, I'll be back on Friday with another unusual subject, so I hope to see you there. Till then, folks! 
You know how I feel about you. I really think you're the one. So how many other guys have been the one? Just one before the other one. That's the one after the one I'm talking to now. That's you, Han. It's only you now. So how many people have you slept with? Well, Han, remember I'm a Filipina and we sleep with five or six family members in one bed. So what's the point of trying to put a number on it? But how many of them were not your family members? Wow, that'd be really hard to guess at. I have a big family, so depending on how extended you're talking about, I'm pretty much related to everyone in town. And besides, isn't the human race just one big family? Look, what I want to know is how many guys have dipped their chocolate bar in your peanut butter. So you just want to know about the chocolate ones, right? Okay, last chance. How many men have you had sexual intercourse with? Just the men, not women or boys? And why are you so obsessed with this number thing? Because the more sexual partners a woman has, the higher the chance that she can't bond with just one man anymore. Oh, that's ridiculous. You think just because my goose is a little loose that I can't bond with you? Come on, James. James? My name is Robert. James, Robert, what's in a name, right? <sighs> oh, well, who's next? Hey, James, hi. You know how I feel about you, right? I really think you're the one. If you think about it, I'm kind of like your massage therapist, helping you relieve all the stress and worries about life in a new country and making sure to hit all the trigger points of local culture and costumes. The only thing I ask for my service is that you please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you're not late for your next session. And please consider becoming a patron so you can see all the extra content and exclusive videos on my Patreon page. And while you're waiting for your next appointment, feel free to check out these other videos too. So, are you ready for your massage? I promise I won't rob you the wrong way. Unless you ask me to.